many people use the quote, it's all about the journey, not the destination. Well, we think sailing is a balance of both. Obviously, it's all about the destinations. I mean, the places that you can get to by sailboat are insane. But if you don't enjoy the journey to the destination, it makes sailing a little tricky because to get to the destination, there is a lot of journeying. Let's get into it. Finally! Oh my God! We're on a mission around Australia while we complete our degrees. And in the next couple of days, there is little time for destinations as we complete the final big legs to reach the very most northern tip of Australia. I think we're feeling very relieved to have gotten to this point. This is a big deal as we will be leaving our home coast behind to pursue new waters to the west where large crocodiles lurk, massive tidal ranges play with you. Oh, <laughs> welcome to the Northern Territory, hey? What the? And the extraordinary heat will creep in. The exhaustion is well and truly setting in on our little journey here up the Cape of Australia. Um, nine hour sail today. I accidentally shaved my, all my hair there. Let's get into it. today so not so downwind as we've had for the last like almost week so it's probably going to be a nice little sailing day so we're heading to a little place called Hannibal Island I think it's a little bit similar to where we were last night but who knows until we get there eh? I've never seen Simon with such a bald face before this is the first time in our relationship in three over three years where I've seen him oh, a with just his cheeks <laughs> it's fine but it's just such a difference from having scruff you know scruff, I'm a scruffy guy <laughs> I've never seen Simon's top lip never you never will when I die you can shave it have a have a gander so Hannibal Island is around a 50 mile sail away. It's another small sand island with surrounding reef. And although it looks pretty amazing, we've chosen this island purely because of its distance from our next location. If we do a 50 mile sail today, then it will be about a 60 mile sail tomorrow to Albany Island, which is at the top of Australia. We have two big days of sailing ahead of us after a jam packed week on the move but we've just got to smash it out. Yeah. Do we just try and slow down? Um, no idea. I can the main if you want. To slow it down. Yeah. This fish is full jumping. I've got this on full lock and it keeps running. I'm holding it in my hand. We're to do it. We have caught mackerels before. The shark. It in head. The spotted school. What a specimen. Woo! But we've been hanging out to finally pull in the stealthy Spanish mackerel. The piece de resistance of the mackerel family. And. Yes! This is the fish that I first tasted and went, actually, I might try fishing because I enjoyed it. But we've got a few of these get off. Finally! We have finally done it. Oh my god, I did my victory lap way too early. That poor fish is probably shark bait now because it's bleeding. <laughs> it's taking a gap to the s- oh. 
Oh man. You should see how often Sophie's at me. But we had a feeling we were bound to be on again as we crept towards this passage between islands. And we weren't wrong. We're back on! He took so much line out when he ran before. We've done it! We got a macro! We knew there'd be fish here. Well, we thought there would and we definitely were right. There was fish here. Holy cow. It's about the size of a cow. We're gonna fill up this fish and get it in the fridge. We're running dead square downwind now towards our destination. We're sitting on about five and a half at the moment, but we'll be sitting on a lot higher when we get the head sail out and pull it out on the other side. But we figure that can wait for a bit. Let's deal with this fish first. Look at that fillet. <laughs> You're like a pro now. I'm not that good. That's so good. <laughs> Okie dokie, we're so filleting the sh out of that fish, we're going to go forward and set up the pole. Oh my god, we're hooking now. I need a bucket over me so badly, it's so hot today and I'm so greasy. Like a jar! Oh, that feels so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I need a drop. It's so good. It's so good. It feels next level. Somehow you still get the salt off by using salt water. Like. It's, good. Ah! it's like a shower with a show. Excellent! What a stellar day today. We're very much just enjoying cruising along like this wing on wing it's really nice and feeling a little bit dopey and dozy dozy is that the right word <sighs> it's amazing what you can achieve in a week we left lizard island on monday and it's now sunday and Gosh, I don't know how many miles we've done overall, but we've stopped at about six locations. We've seen crazy contrasting coast. The windiest day being 36 knots of wind and the lightest day being about six knots of wind. It's amazing how different just one stretch of, one small stretch of coast can be. And we're almost at the top. 
after today there's one more one more leg until we're almost until we're at the top which is pretty crazy otherwise it's been a really great week it's definitely given us a taste of what cruising's like without any commitments <laughs> I mean, we have commitments still, but they've sort of just disappeared with the reception. Um, so it's definitely given us a taste of what it could be like if we didn't have any uni or YouTube to do. It'd be a nice life. I'd, I can tell you that. It'd be a very chill life. But we're very keen to get degrees and we're even keener to make videos for you. So, yes, there's a fine balance. <laughs> What's he making? Iced coffees. Iced coffees. Just like regular ones, but with more ice. Oh, we're living the luxe life, mate. Like. Look at that. I keep just getting coconut froth. I've been spoiled, eh? Catch a fish, so fillets it, and then cooks up prawn like Spanish mac burritos. <laughs> what a win. How is that? All I had to do was just wind the poor thing in, so I was taking care of everything else. Good, eh? Way up onto Hannibal Island. Kind of cool we are approaching from the east side, so we're gonna have to chuck a chuck a yui, chuck a semi yui, half a yui uh, around the corner and head around towards the western side of the islands. Getting all technical. <laughs> I feel like we're so close to this little island. We're still in 16 meters of water and we're trying to get closer and closer and closer to see if we could get any shallower water. It just wasn't happening. We're going to end up on the island. <laughs> but reef first. Reef and then the island. <laughs> we're struggling to hold in this deep water. It's also basically low tide and we're getting significant chop wrapping around the island from both directions. So with the tide coming up, the whole situation will be made worse. So we've pulled up anchor to see if we can re-anchor just a little bit closer in to hide from this swell and find shallower water. We're gonna try coming just a little bit over here. However, it hasn't made a big difference depth and swell wise but at least we're holding now. We've also made the decision to use our road for the first time, which of course makes us a little nervous. Simon doesn't trust it, he wants a better night's sleep, so we're gonna attach another safety rope to our chain in case the road gives way. That's not allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> the old typical slim knot. We need to find more coconut trees. This is our last one. Is that it? Is that everything? Oh, they do the whole thing. Anyway. Thank you. As you can tell, I'm no expert at coconut. 
We always get it done in the end. <laughs> Are you happy with your coconut milk? Yeah, it's like the first time I've ever made coconut milk before. And then you're left with like dry coconut, which we can use for pancakes, cake, cat food, <laughs> cat food. We weren't feeling very motivated to go to shore today, were we? It's kind of like wind against tide against waves from two angles so the boat's kind of going bruh, 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 bruh. doesn't really feel appropriate to leave Chili here by herself <laughs> she doesn't know how to that's our excuse anyway yeah, she doesn't know how to steer we're just, if anyone we're just actually be. feeling really lazy <laughs> how good a night's sleep do you think we'll get out of 10 this right now is we are halfway to high tide. It's pretty rolly. Pretty rolly. Tonight, I am attempting to make a foraged coconut caught Spanish mackerel pasta. Simon climbed up a tree and got us, us a coconut at Lizard Island and we've cracked it open. Oh. And I've attempted to make my first ever coconut milk that I'll add to it. I'm not sure how this will turn out. It's a complete mystery. I'm currently cooking up some onions and garlic, which you can't really go wrong with. And I'll throw it all together with the coconut milk and then throw in the fish. And maybe voila. Not bad, eh? It's pretty good. Not bad. Pretty good indeed. Can't believe we got the coconut. And the fish. Right. The coconuts have been chilling for a bit for a special occasion. Because we haven't actually passed as many coconut trees as we thought we would. So we hung on to one for a special occasion and I thought our first Spanish mackerel was a pretty special occasion. <laughs> You're going back for seconds. We're going back for seconds. Ooh, that good, eh? Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. We got very lucky. We woke up this morning to our makeshift safety line wrapped around our road with the shackle connected to our chain missing. The road was also chafing through. So fortunately we woke up before we lost all of our chain and anchor, but unfortunately we won't be able to use our road again. However, we made it through the night and we're pretty keen to get moving to stop bouncing around like crazy. We've got the sails up, we've got a reef in the main and a handkerchief for heading out because there's a few weird systems around us at the moment, but we are hooking along and the mood is high but sleepy because we are on the final leg of what is our trip up Cape York, the pointy bit of Australia, to the top, and this is our last big sail we have to do. So I'm excited for a sleep in the morning. We're cruising along nice so far. Oh, it's been a long week. We're at the end of the rainbow. How cool is that? <laughs> I can tell you that there's no pot of gold. We're right in the shipping lane and we were on the wrong side of the, of the lane and then a ship's come. So we're trying to get a mad dash across the shipping lane to get onto the other side. It's really foggy though, the ships, we yeah. can see it on the AIS, but ahead of us, you're gonna see a big wall of grey. We'll see a big ship looking <laughs> log emerge from the fog oh soon and hope God. that we're on the right side of it and it's not oh straight in front God. of us. Playing chicken with a ship is not fun. Playing chicken with a ship you can't see is even less fun. Can you imagine if we didn't have the AIS and we couldn't see and then a ship's just like mole. I guess that's how it happens. Somewhere there. Where? 
I think we're good. I think we just made it across. We're not heading for each other. We're definitely on now on its port side. So I think we're all right. <laughs> Man, we have cut it close to this thing though. Look at that. That's a big ass ship. That is a big ass ship that you don't want to be in front of. <laughs> Sick, eh? The last eggs, and there was no more eggs. That's it. The end of the eggs. Eggs. Gornedict. Eggs of the line. Excellent. Very last eggs. I'm ecstatic about eating my last eggs. Sorry guys, ignore my puns. Or, sorry guys, ignore my puns. <laughs> Definitely not really feeling it today, hey. The wind's picked off, it's about 25 knots. We're just slewing all over the place and really struggling to make our course. The wind's very downwind, but not quite downwind enough to be comfortable goose winging. I mean, we are goose winging, but we're just on the verge where we can goose wing, if that makes sense. So the head sail is not 100% happy. Anyway, I think that we're just really tired. We've got 20 miles to go now, so I suppose we're on the, the home run. I feel like there must be some sort of current starting to flow against us at the moment because we're in 20 knots of breeze with decent amount of sail out and sometimes we're dropping as low as four knots and then we're getting up to seven knots of speed it's it's all over the shop and back to front at the moment over We are definitely feeling pretty sentimental about being so close to the top of Australia. We're leaving the east coast, our home coast behind, and it's strange to think that we've got to do almost a whole lap of Australia to get Nakama back in familiar waters. We're already starting to miss the reef and the spectacular islands the Queensland coast offers. And we are also definitely starting to feel those notorious top end tides. We feel like we're on a treadmill with just the following seas lurching us forward to gain those miles. Alright, we're not here to be heroes, we're here for a good time. So we've just turned the engine on um, we're probably going to furl in the heady so we're not goose winging on our way through this little tight passage here. There's a fair bit of swell around and being this tight passage with the big strong tides up here, we just don't anything to anything weird to happen. So that's our little sense of security there. So that's what we're doing. We're coming up on the entrance here. We're really not far away at all now. Yeah, anything to add to that, Skip? We have been warned about the tides up here but we wanted to see it for ourselves. Up at the most northern tip of Australia, the most extreme tides are of course spring tides, where you'll see a tidal range of around three to five meters. In the Torres Strait, which is now only 20 miles away, the tide can rip through the tight knit islands at around eight knots, which we will get to experience. You'd think so, I was hooking it. Dude, yeah, that's just kind how of... is this going? But the tidal range is only going to get worse as we head further west. As you can see, the range there is about 8 metres. So this is sort of like a soft entry into negotiating extreme tides.
top end greeted us with its red dirt, the best bait ball we've ever seen, and a turtle that looked like it's lived through a thousand lifetimes. We can't believe we've finally made it up here. I think we're feeling very relieved to have gotten to this point and oh well guys as always thank you for tuning in we shared the last bevy we've been saving for this moment between the two of us we made some Spanish mackerel burritos and hit the hay but join us next week. We found our first crop. We head over to Adolphus Island before then celebrating Slim's birthday at the official northernmost point of the Australian continent. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! It's not lighting. No. <laughs> you got your candles. If you've made it here with us and have enjoyed the episode, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. And a big thank you to our patrons for making these videos possible. Alrighty, roll the bloopers. I'm sorry you had to die. Now be food for someone else. The ceremony. Climate, climbing. <laughs> Simon climbed. I had to make a mega smoothie. I have to do it sitting on the floor because I get nearly falling over. Simon and I have been singing this morning. How much wood could a woodchuck chop if a wood Chuck could chop wood. Now we're trying to create one of those like tongue twistery songs for miles. How many miles would a miles do if he forgot to tie his shoe? He would do as many miles as miles needed to do if he really needed to take a poo. We'll keep refining it, we'll keep refining it. I'll radio. <laughs> that was pretty good. It's so weird seeing my chin. My eyes are bleeding from staring. something in your ear, I really want to get out. And my eyes have been staring at the sun without sunglasses for too long. That was an ear booger. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I think it just went in your mouth. No, it didn't.